Welcome to this video in which we describe how to determine what the forces are in a free body diagram when your body of interest is interacting with a frictionless surface or with a surface that has been made in some sense essentially frictionless by uh, rollers or something like that. So uh, what we have here is a cheesy clip art ice skater. The idea being that the ice on which the skater is skating uh, is in some sense a frictionless surface. Uh, the friction of the surface is much lower uh, than most surfaces. And so if we want to build a free body diagram of the skater, uh, we would follow the steps uh, to build free body diagrams. We would define the system to be the skater. And I'll just leave uh, the skater here in terms of the sketch. Um, the places where the skater is interacting with her environment is right here where her skate is on the ice and then she also has a center of gravity um, which I guess would be about her belly button I don't know and uh, there will be weight uh, there a weight vector as well okay and then uh, the last thing we can do is represent the interactions uh, between her environment and herself with um, with forces. So we'll get rid of the ice here. Let's make it go away. And replace the ice with a force. And because the ice is frictionless, it cannot produce a force that is um, it cannot produce a horizontal force, that is a force in the x-direction. It can only produce a force that is normal or perpendicular to the surface of the ice. So this then would be, say call it force N, or Fn for normal force. Uh, we know the direction, in this case because the ice was uh, horizontal, the normal force will be vertical. Uh, we may not know the uh, uh, the magnitude of the force, but um, that's basically how you would do it. As a second example, even cheesier clip art, uh, suppose we have a young man who's uh, on a skateboard and doing some sort of trick uh, so that his skateboard wheel is up against a, a vertical wall. And uh, let's suppose we want to define a free body diagram for the skater and his skateboard. We'll consider uh, the skater and the board together to be the system. So here we have the system. Uh, you can see that the system interacts with its environment here, uh, where its wheel, the skateboard wheel, is touching the wall. And then gravity, so... Um, and we'll assume maybe a center of gravity is about his belly button. And uh, now we need to show how the skateboard is interacting with the wall. So uh, let's get rid of the wall and replace it with a force. Again, the wall can only produce a force or exert a force on the skater that is normal to the surface. And in this case, because the wall is vertical, normal to vertical would be a horizontal force. So I might call this F sub n again. And the idea is that any vertical force that the wall might try to exert um, will not be transmitted to the skater because there's the wheels on the skateboard that roll and keep that from happening. So there you have it. That's how uh, you can handle uh, forces uh, that are applied either by a frictionless surface or applied through rollers or some other type of device that uh, keeps or that uh, requires the force to only be normal to the surface of interest. So that should do it for this video.